this tutorial, we will learn how to create loops and tags. To do this, we'll be working in the Domain Explorer. To begin, we first need to set our preferences. We'll click File and click Preferences. We'll then click Instrument Index and then Profile. Here are our different instrument profile type options. Selecting or unselecting these boxes allows you to activate or deactivate instrument type profile options. For example, if you clear the specifications checkbox, when creating a tag number, SPI will ignore the specification creation options and create the tag without any specification. The user would then have to manually generate a specification for the created tag. Once all of your preferences are set, we'll go into the Domain Explorer to begin creating our loop. We'll click on the Loops folder, which gives us access to all of the loops in our unit, and to create a new loop, we'll right-click the Loops folder, click New, and click Loop. This will open the New Loop Number window. We can enter our loop number here. Note, remember to always press the Tab button on your keyboard to switch from blank to blank. This ensures proper naming of our loops and tags. We'll click OK, and this will bring us to the Loop Properties page. Here we have different characteristics of our loop. We'll fill in the loop service blank E102 overhead for overhead temperature. We'll fill in the loop function, the loop type, the loop equipment, and the PNID drawing. Next, we want to make sure that the apply a PNID drawing to tags, apply service to tags, and apply equipment to tags boxes are all checked off. This ensures that those properties will be associated with any new tag numbers made in this loop. Now, let's create tags for our loop. We'll click yes, and we can type in the tag we want to create. For this example, let's create a thermo well. The tag number properties window will open, and we see that the service, the equipment, and the PNID number have all been populated already, and that's because we checked off those boxes in the loop property screen. In addition, the location has been assigned. That is because the location for that instrument type had already been set to field. Changes can also be made in the property screen. For example, clicking the drop down for a line lets us update the line number for our instrument. If the instrument you're working with requires power supply, checking off the power supply box gives us access to the power supply tab. This tab lets us edit the properties of the power supply for our instrument. Another important tab is the custom fields tab. Here we can assign custom field values to your instrument based off previously designed custom fields. We can now click OK and we'll see that our loop and instrument have now been created. We can also create new tags from an existing loop. To do this, we'll right click the loop, click new, and click instrument. It will prompt us to enter a new tag number and we'll enter TE001. The select instrument type window will open. Note, this window will only open if there is no direct match of the instrument type typed in or if there is more than one entry in the instrument type table. Our tag number properties window will open. We'll add our line number and once all of our properties are set, we'll click OK and we'll see that our new tag has been created. We can also create a new tag from the instruments folder. We can right click the folder, click new and click instrument. It will ask us to create our new tag number which we'll name TT001. The loop name window will open and notice that the loop has already been autofilled. This is because SPI assumes what loop the instrument will be assigned to based on the first letter of the instrument type and the tag number. Clicking OK will open the Tag Number Properties window. Our Properties window will open. 
we'll update our PNID number. And before we click OK to create our instrument, if the user wanted to add an instrument to the loop, clicking the New button will open the New Tag Number window where the next instrument could be created. Once our properties are set, we'll click OK and see that our new tag has been created. In addition, if we go to the loops folder and click refresh, we will see that our tag has been assigned to loop T001. Note, the default order of your tags in your loop is set to alphanumeric. If you want to organize the order of your tags by internal loop number, you can right click the loop and clicking sort will open the sort window. We can then change the item type to instrument and check the box for internal loop order. If you need to update the internal loop order, right clicking and clicking properties will open the tag number properties window. Here we can then update our internal loop order. Now we will learn how to create loops and instruments through duplication. Before we duplicate a loop, we should always check the preferences for duplication. We have a couple of different duplication options. The first is create new tags according to profile options. This will create new tags based on the instrument type profile. The next is duplicate source tag data. This option creates new tags based on the options of the selected source tag number. This will duplicate profile specific properties of that instrument type, but it will not duplicate the specific instrument content. And lastly, you can check this box here if you want to include custom fields when duplicating tags. Now that our preferences are set, we can now duplicate our loop. To duplicate a loop and instrument, we'll right click the loop and click duplicate. It will ask us to name our new loop, which we'll name F001 and click OK. This will open the Create Loop Tags window. Here we can choose which tags we want to duplicate from the original loop. We can select and unselect the tags that we want to duplicate. The Copy Instrument Type from Source Tag Numbers box is very important. Checking this box enables you to keep the instrument type of the new tags the same as the instrument type of the Source Tag Numbers. We'll click OK and the Loop Number Properties window will open. The loop number properties window will open, and the properties for this loop are the same properties from the source loop that we duplicated. It will ask us if we want to edit tag numbers, which we'll say yes to, and the tag number properties window will open. Here we can look at the properties of all the new tags that we just created. Note, it is a best practice to review the properties of all our duplicated tags, to make sure that the copy properties are correct for the new tag. Now that we've confirmed the copy properties, we can click OK and see that our new loop and instruments have been created.